Okay, so in this video, I'm going to show you how I made this sewing mat for my sewing machine. The very first one I've ever made, so that's why it's a little wonky. Okay, so I first started by cutting a half of a yard of the batting, which I'm doing, and then half of the yard of the light purple fabric and the dark purple fabric. Uh, the length I kind of just did went, aired on the side of going longer. So you see I'm still cutting it, trying to get it all even. Half a yard, things 18 inches. I had to, I had to Google it. <laughs> so you need two pieces of the half a yard long or wide fabric and the batting. And so here I am pinning it all together, sandwiching the batting in between. And then I decided to start sewing rows on it. Um, I sewed, I thought I was sewing two inch rows, but I ended up being sewing one and three quarter inches. If I went back and did it again, I'd probably do inch, maybe half inch rows, because it was really poofy when I was done. But I mean, it turned out okay. Doing this mat, I tried to do rows of about two inches or so. I don't even know if that's two inches, because I apparently can't use the. Uh, gauge on my sewing machine. No, that's about inch and a half, inch and three quarters between each one. So I have that. It should look like that. They don't have to be 100% even. Obviously, you can tell they're a little wonky. They're kind of going down at angles. This one, I try to close it up. It looks a little wonky. I probably shouldn't have just, I should have just left that alone on this edge. But now I'm going to go ahead and trim up these sides so that way it's even. And yeah, then I'll move on. Alright, so here I am trying to trim the sides of the mat so everything is straight and level and I had to go back and trim this like 10 times because I suck at doing straight lines when I'm cutting things apparently. But it worked out in the end, so. Okay, so now what I'm doing is I want... Let me move these pens out of the way. So I want this light purple to be what the the side the machine sits on and I want this dark purple when I fold it up to be in the pot outside of the pocket so what I did is I cut a strip of fabric for my binding that right now it's a little bit longer than this is wide but it's two and a half inches wide and I just folded it over in half and ironed it down and so now the raw edges I'm pinning against the edge of my um, mat and then when I have that pinned down I'm going to sew along this edge a quarter of an inch and then that way I can flip it over I'll be able to fold this over on the outside and then I can sew it again another quarter of an inch so I will take video of me sewing that and what it looks like when I'm done alright so here I'm sewing the binding that I just cut at a quarter of an inch on the front uh, sorry on the back side and then I flip it over Sew it again, quarter of an inch to form the top part of the pocket. Okay, so now for pockets. Now that I have my binding sewn on right here, because I sewed it on the other side and then I flipped it over and sewed it again, uh, probably at about a quarter, maybe another quarter inch, I think. I'm terrible about measuring that. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I measured this, I want it six inches deep, so... That's one, two, three, four, five, six, six inches deep. And I'm only going to do two pockets. I'm going to do one that's about four-ish inches over, including seam allowance. I kind of wanted it to go halfway in the middle of my stitching I already had here, so I would know where it is. And then I'm going to leave this other one nice and open for big stuff. So I can put, like, my snips and stuff like here and my seam ripper and all those other things that I need. All right, so I just sewed two pockets, a big one and a small one. You can sew three if you want. I did, That's all I wanted on here. So that's what I did. So right here I'm cutting strips for the binding that's going to go around the three sides. I just two and a half inches fold it over. That's what I'm doing, measuring it out two and a half inches. And now I'm pinning the binding around the three edges because I don't trust myself to just sew it. i got to pin everything and make sure it's even. Alright, so now I have my binding pinned on here which this is going to be interesting to see how this turns out because I've never bound a quilt or anything like this I've never done a corner I think I figured out how to do it I think I know how to do it we're gonna find out not sure but yeah we're gonna see okay so now I have it sewn all the way around I think I figured out the corners after you know seam ripping it so I'm gonna fold it around and I'm gonna pin it down and sew it again Last part I gotta do is I folded that binding back over on the back side 
Um, sewed it down on a quarter of an inch on three sides. I had to go and touch up some of the, the two or one of the corners because I messed it up a little bit, but it ended up turning out pretty good. I was happy with it. And here is the finished product. So I'm actually surprised I did halfway decent on the binding on these corners. And now I have pockets where I already have my snips in here. Uh, if I can get it out. My seam ripper, use that a lot. I can use marking pen, pins. So yeah, I'm pretty I'm pretty happy with it. If I was to make this again, which I might make another one because I do have an overlocker. Um I probably would do the stitching uh, closer together, maybe every inch instead of inch and three quarters, my random number I did. And um Measure it a little bit better because it is a little wonky because I'm still working on measuring stuff. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I think it looks pretty good. So, hope you enjoyed um, watching me make this sewing mat, which was basically a mini quilt. But, 